Right, here we go, here's one. Gun to the grave. Oh, he's got two massive sacks. Hello, ballers! What's going on? It's Preacher. Let's take a look at our new island adventures, shall we? They're better. I'm not denying it. I'd be the first to jump on them if they weren't, but they are, in fact, better. Uh, these come with two new features. I'm going to talk about them in a moment, but I'm going to let you take in our exploration route that we took of the brand new map, Havenswood. Why the fuck can you not go to the mansion? <laughs> This is so frustrating is a large chunk of this map is actually a mansion up on the hill that looks really good <laughs> and you can't go there. I'm sorry we checked. You can't go there. At least in this version. They may change it, but you cannot get there. We tried our best to get up there. It looks like it should be part of Havenswood, but it's not. Havenwood is, is Havenswood, sorry, it's got a plural, uh, is actually um, in the style of the new island adventures. They've changed a lot here, guys. There's actually quite a significant amount of changes. Uh, first and foremost, you're going to notice that, not particularly in Havenswood, but we'll get back to this in a second, is that Havenwood is actually very small. Uh, it's a rather, a rather condensed map. There's a lot going on. There's a nice wood, there's a small town, and then there's a little coastal area. But that's about it. But that falls in line with the way they've designed the islands now. Far less in the way of trash. I know it doesn't look like it in Havenswood, but you'll see a significant difference when I show you what's changed in the other islands. Other things you're going to notice is there is a huge amount of rares now. So what they've done is significantly changed these to have far less sort of uh, trashy, non-elite mobs. You're not going to be pulling a ton of crocolists anymore. You can do large pulls, but it's actually incredibly dangerous because they've introduced a number of new mobs specifically designed to try and prevent you from just trying to AoE farm because that's not how they want you to deal with islands. The emphasis is now on these larger, rare mobs, and there is a lot more of them. You'll see plenty of new ones in this video that have all been added into it, including new enemies to face. There are new members of the AI pack, and they use a lot more class abilities. This is really fun. Uh, we came up against one of the new teams just several times that contained a DK uh, who was death gripping, he was asphyxiating, he was death and decaying, he was silencing, uh, he was doing uh, combat res. Uh, he was paired up with a Mistweaver monk who was vivifying and healing them all and doing all sorts of crazy stuff along with hunters who were using binding trap, all these uh, binding shot I should say, using all their class abilities in a far better way than the previous teams were doing. So it was really nice to see that. At one point I was like death gripped out of a cast, then I got uh, pummeled by something, and then I got silenced by something else, and then I got stunned, uh, and then I got asphyxiated. They, they properly CC'd me, I'm not going to deny it. But that doesn't mean the AI is perfect by any means. The AI still makes some very questionable decisions, or perhaps not. It depends on how you look at it. Uh, so with an emphasis being on rare mobs, this means that there's a lot more opportunity to die. Now, I can't say whether or not these are tuned around having the next tier of gear which won't be until late january as we well know uh, because these mobs are far more dangerous far far more dangerous you are way more likely to die and in combination with that they have changed how the orbs work that heal you they no longer like heal you to full they don't do that anymore they heal you for a about 30 percent of your hp uh, they still resurrect you, but you will now resurrect with 30% HP and no mana if you're a caster. Then it's designed so you can't just, like, chain run into um, orbs and keep your party just overwhelmingly powerful. And if you happen to screw up and die, that you can't just chain res everybody back to full HP and could just continue as if nothing happened. You actually get punished now if you do die, uh, which was a nice addition. The addition of the new mobs as well. So we've got these Geo Shards that have been added. And these Geo Shards drop these orbs, these black orbs everywhere that ping pong you constantly. Now there's a part of this that's frustrating and a part of this that makes sense. It's obviously designed so you can't just AOE pull everything because they're just going to be dropping so many orbs that you're not going to be able to cast anything. You're going to be absolutely screwed. And if you're melee, you can't stay in range of anything. You're going to get trapped in a lot more stuff. It really reduces your ability to pull a huge amount of enemies. And, and compare that and pair that up with the fact that there's way less enemies in general uh this is not what they want you to be doing in island expeditions and it's actually made it better because what they have done is upped the amount of events that happened that go along with that we got multiple events usually two per island that were going on and i went into more portals while looking at the new stuff and not really trying to do anything than i'd done on live in Weeks. I was in portals all the time doing stuff, collecting stuff, which is obviously more beneficial for those of you who are looking to collect the rewards, the pets and whatnot. A lot more pets dropped. Usually I get a pet 
every now and again by accident on normal on live because generally i'm just trying to get in and get out as quickly as possible to collect my weekly ap uh but now i was i got four pets i think while i was doing this so that's a that's a plus for sure for those of you looking for that far more opportunity to gain rewards they still seem to trigger at the same time at the same amounts of ap but it did vary sometimes we got it when the total across both teams was like three thousand. Then we got another one when it was about 8k. And then other times we didn't get one that was like 4,000. So it's around those numbers. But we did get more than one event per island for the most part, uh, which is nice. But I will point out here, only a couple of them will be trying to do fast so we can compare it to live. Other ones were just exploration runs. Seeing what had changed, finding out what was going on, trying to take it all in. Uh, of course, these new islands also come with a couple of new features. You'll notice that there, there are now large crystals on the island that you can mine. So they seem to have put a huge emphasis on mining. Generally, what they want you to do is kill a bunch of rares in an area and then make sure you mine that area. Instead of running all over the island at the start and then trying to collect everything and just AoE it down and collect your AP that way, now what you'll be doing is doing a, a, a dense amount of rares. So you might be doing something like two or three rares. And then you're going to spend a reasonable amount of time actually picking up the stuff they are guarding. So it's more focused in certain areas rather than trying to collect everything. They drop giant sacks, which drops huge amounts of stuff. There are new quests, of course. There's stuff with pickaxes and things like that, which you can do to collect big chunks of AP. And along with that comes the Azerite Extractor and the Azerite Rupture. These are the two new features. So let's start with the Azerite Extractor. The Azerite Extractor is on your ship sometimes. It's not always there, but there seemingly is always one of the two on the island. Uh, from what we can tell is if you have the Azerite Extractor, the actual little spider bot on your ship, that means the Azerite Extractor will be somewhere on the island and you have to find it. If you find the Azerite Extractor and click it, you claim it for your faction and it will start producing Azerite over time. Now, the way they sold this in the description was that you were kind of supposed to guard it. That's not entirely true. It gives you 32 azurite power every 15 seconds it's not a great deal at all if you were to try and like camp it and keep it safe you're not going to win any islands that way the other faction will even the npc in faction will overtake you pretty easily if you did that uh, in fact the big chunk of azurite that you get from this is from clicking it so in order to take it back the other team has to destroy it you can't just run up and click it and take it like a cap to the flag thing you actually have to destroy it then rebuild it for your faction that's when you get a nice chunk of about 300 Azerite power for doing that. It's far more significant than actually keeping the Azerite uh, extractor. So you will have decisions to make. You will have decisions to make on what you want to do there. Because sometimes if the Alliance captures it, it's kind of not worth taking it back unless you're going to run over it. And the enemy NPCs might not take it back because they know they'll lose. And therefore, you'll win it back again and gain significantly more Azerite power because you rebuilt it. That's where the Azerite power comes from. It is nice, though, if you get it early and it's just ticking up for the remainder of the map. Because over time, it does add up, but it's not enough to win you the fight. I think someone calculated it. If you just use the Azerite Extractor, it takes you something like 47 minutes or something to <laughs> win the island. Not exactly ideal, right? That's not what you're looking for. The other one is the Azerite Rupture. Now... It does have an Azerite extractor. It's exactly the same spider bot on top of it, but you seem to get the indication that it's not the extractor on the island. It's actually the rupture if the Azerite extractor is not on your boat at the start. So you can sort of make that conclusion. I might be wrong on that. It might be entirely random. We did about seven islands, but that seems to be the way it comes on. So to be clear on this, if your boat has an Azerite extractor on it at the start, and it can have up to three of them, that seems to be an indication that on the island is the Azerite extractor, which is what you click, and then over time it will give you Azerite power. If there isn't an Azerite extractor on your boat at the start, then the island will have an Azerite rupture. So what is it? Well, you'll see it, and it looks exactly the same as an Azerite Extractor. It's even called an Azerite Extractor. But this time around, you have to click it, and that will start a horde mode. Now, the horde mode isn't mega. Don't expect hundreds of mobs to come running at you. But it is very annoying mobs. It is designed to keep you on your toes a little bit. It's the knock-around mobs. They're going to be dropping these orbs everywhere. And once you clear a wave, you then have to click on the Azerite Extractor again. So you can actually see what's happening here is if it's the normal Azerite Extractor, it buries its head into the ground and it will just keep mining over the course of the island. If it's the Azerite Rupture, it buries its head in there, spawns some mobs, and then it will pop back out again. And you have to click it again to get it to go and spawn the next mobs. Ultimately, it will spawn a boss version of these mobs. And that will give you a good, I think it's 550 Azerite power for doing that. So it's definitely worthwhile to give that a go. 
Now, the biggest obvious changes and the way this all makes sense is actually on the older islands. The older islands have significantly less enemies on them now. And that's exactly to stop what people were doing, which was to AOE farm. Now, some of you might be like, God, that sucks. It's actually more interesting and it's about the same speed. I wouldn't worry about it too much at all. Because you're do instead of dealing with just loads of crocolisks, loads of turtles or whatever, uh, this time around, those mobs are still there. There's just way less of them. Uh, instead, you're dealing with way, way, way more rares. Like, we open the map sometime, the island is crawling with rare enemies that you have to deal with, and you can pull as many as you want. Like I said, I'm not sure how much gear this is tuned for. We were all around 380 plus on these copied characters. These aren't our current live characters. They're the ones we use for raid testing from a while ago now. Uh, so they're about 382-ish, uh, something along those lines. So pretty high. And these mobs were just smashing us. Even tanks uh, were dying and stuff like that. It's actually a little bit difficult, especially with the re far reduced healing from the orbs. Uh, overall, this was a nice change. This is actually a nice change. I'm not going to bitch about it. I like the fact that there were multiple invasions. The scenery changed a lot. They were far more thematic. I think that's great. Like, we went into, I think it was um, Mudvale or something like that. Uh, Mudvale several times, and it was different every single time. The theme was totally different. The invasions were all varied. We went from troll invasions to storm elementals uh, to mogu invasions, followed by undead elementals. Significantly new amounts of rare mobs. We saw new and interesting mobs every single time. Of course, they will start to repeat. No one's going to deny that. But overall, this was a really solid experience. It was. It was a very solid experience. A significant improvement for me. I was far more engaged. Far more interested. I wasn't just like AoE, AoE, AoE. God, we're not finished yet. It was now there's a portal. Now there's a new invasion. Areas we just cleared have now got some interesting mobs in them. It wasn't a case of just look around for the same mob over and over again and hope to AoE them down as fast as possible. So I'm for this change. I'm feeling pretty positive about it. I think it's a good idea what they've done here. Uh, shame it's coming a little too late, but that doesn't mean they're not incentivizing you boys because along with doing your weekly, which usually rewards two and a half thousand AP, it will still do that. But, but they've added something else. At the end of doing your weekly, you will also gain a treasure map, an epic treasure map. And this will give you just a follower mission for your mission table, but it has significantly better rewards. Now, this reward does appear to be random. I turned it in and I got a quest for 2,000 AP with another 1,500 AP bonus if I could do that. So that's 3,500 artifact power on top of the 2,500 artifact power for doing the weekly. That's what I got from mine. However, my friend Cloggington, he got a quest for 5,000 gold with a 1,500 AP bonus on top of it. Yes. So this is all on top of the standard 2,500 AP you get for doing the weekly. There's nothing separate about this. They complete in exactly the same time. It's just the weekly now rewards 2,500 AP and the treasure map. And the treasure map gives you either so far 5,000 gold and 1,500 AP should you get the bonus. Or it gives you another 3,500 AP should you get the bonus. Uh, which is a nice indicator that they want you to go in there and they want you to do a few of the islands to see that they are much better themed now. They do have more variety. This is what islands should have been at the start. It absolutely is. No longer, I mean, I say no longer, but you can still pull a lot of enemies. We did try that, but honestly, it seemed strategically unsound to do so. By that, I mean exploring the island, which is what they're about. Exploring the island, finding the extractor, finding the rupture, seeing where the densest amount of rares are, see who had the best loot, looking for the invasions to happen, which events happen now. A Naga invasion doesn't happen, okay. Uh, oh, now a Mogu one's occurred. Now there's a portal up. Doing those things seem to finish us in a relatively quick time uh, and also netted far more rewards. So you guys will see. It's it's entirely possible that we'll outgear this when this actually uh, approaches the new raid tier. But considering these are supposed to be coming out in a couple of weeks, I think this is a good start. Thank you very much for listening, guys. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.